A few years ago, I bought the scale speedometer for my layout. It is an AccuTrack 2 speedometer, and it is quite a nice unit, but it has a few shortcomings. First, it is limited to N, H, O, and O, O scales. If you model in Z, T, T, S, or O, this will not work. Second, it will not measure very low speeds. If a train is in the unit for too long, it simply reports an error. Third, and most important, this unit is no longer sold. You might find used units on eBay. As I am making this video, there is one listed for $300. Accurate speed measurement is important when you need to speed match locomotives. So what is a modeler to do? Welcome back to my channel, and as always, thanks to my subscribers. Here is the answer. A scale speedometer that you can build for less than $20 worth of parts and some scrap styrene. In this video, and in the next two videos, I will provide step-by-step -step instructions on how to build this speedometer, which will work in any scale, and which will measure speeds down to 0.1 kilometers per hour. It will report speed in your choice of either miles per hour or kilometers per hour. The speedometer is built around the Arduino microprocessor, which means it needs to be programmed. But don't worry, in part two of this video series, I will take you step by step through the entire process, starting with installing the Arduino software on your computer, downloading the program file, customizing the program file, and loading the program onto the Arduino. I will also explain the program in detail for those who are interested. But this explanation can safely be skipped if you are not interested. Here is a video of the basic system in operation. As you can see, the basic system must be connected to your computer with a USB cable. Obviously, without a laptop computer, this is probably not feasible. However, part three of this video series will show you how to build a battery-powered standalone unit. You just switch it on, place it alongside your track, and it's ready to go. The standalone unit will require some additional parts, costing less than $20 total. When we start the speedometer, it first reports ready. When the train moves past the speedometer, it first reports detecting, then it reports the measured speed. Finally, when the train clears the speedometer, it reports ready again. As you can see, the speedometer works in either direction. If this appeals to you, let's get started. First, you'll need to order the hardware. You'll need a pair of infrared sensors and an Arduino Nano. See the description below this video for links to buy these parts. If you already own an Arduino Uno or clone, you can use that instead. See the description below this video for the changes you'll need to make for your speedometer. If you already own an Arduino Mega or clone, save it for building your DCC EX command station and buy the Nano. While you are waiting for your hardware to arrive, you might want to fire up part two of this series and get a head start installing the Arduino software and downloading the speedometer program. With your hardware in hand, it's time to start building your speedometer. But first, let's look briefly at the IR sensor. The IR sensor consists of two paired infrared LEDs, one emitter, the clear LED, and one detector, the black LED. When we apply power to the sensor, the emitter LED continuously emits infrared light, and the sensor responds to the infrared light reflected back to the detector LED. There are three connections to this sensor, input voltage, ground, and output voltage. The recommended input voltage is 3.3 volts. Fortunately, the Arduino has a pin which supplies 3.3 volts for purposes just like this. This particular sensor sets the voltage of the output pin to nearly zero volts when an object is close enough to be detected. When no object is detected, the output voltage is set to about 3.3 volts. You can adjust the sensitivity of the sensor using this onboard potentiometer. 
by turning the potentiometer clockwise as far as possible. The sensor will detect objects about 12 inches away. That's 30 centimeters. By turning the potentiometer counterclockwise all the way, objects must be no more than about 1 inch away, or 2 centimeters, to be detected. The sensors I received were adjusted to detect objects about 4 inches away, which is perfect for our needs. We'll start by assembling the circuit, and the first thing we need to do is supply power to the two IR sensor modules. This requires connecting the 3.3 volt pin on the Arduino to the VCC pin on the sensors, and connecting the Arduino ground pin to the GND terminals on the sensors. Since the Arduino only has one 3.3 volt pin, we need to create a Y connector to allow us to connect 3.3 volts to both sensors at the same time. We'll do the same with the ground connection. The IR sensors listed in the description below this video come with two sets of connectors. One set is male-female, and the other set is female-female. Strip the red connectors from both sets, and strip the black connectors from both sets. Now cut the two female-female connectors in half, and cut the female ends off of the male-female connectors, leaving about an inch of wire with the female end. Strip the insulation off of all six wires. Now twist the bare ends of the three red connectors together securely and wrap the connection with electrical tape as shown. Then do the same with the black connectors. Finally, separate two more female-female connectors from the bunch. Select any two easily distinguished colors. Now it's time to connect the circuit. Plug the single end of the red Y connector onto the 3.3 volt Arduino pin. That pin is located here. Next, plug the single end of the black connector onto the ground pin of the Arduino. There are two ground pins on the Nano, here and here. Next, Plug one of your colored connectors onto the A0 pin. That pin is located here. Then plug the other colored connector onto the A1 pin. That pin is adjacent to the A0 pin. Now let's connect the IR sensors. Plug one red connector onto the VCC pin and one black connector onto the ground pin. Plug one of the colored connectors onto the out pin. Repeat this with the second IR sensor and the remaining red, black, and colored connectors. Your circuit is now complete. If you have already downloaded the Arduino software, you can upload the sketch to your Arduino and test the circuit if you like. Last, you'll need to build a simple frame to hold the electric components. You may use styrene, wood, or even cardboard. Just use non-conductive materials. I chose styrene, so I'll describe how I built my frame, but feel free to make any changes you like. I started with a piece of 30 thousandths styrene sheet, cut to about one and a half inches wide by six inches long. In the approximate center of the strip, I cut two parallel slots, one eighth by one and a half inches long. The nano pins will fit through these slots. Next, I cemented supports lengthwise along the bottom edges of the strip. I used 1 8 by 1 quarter inch strips, but you should use whatever you have on hand. Then I cemented supports to the two ends. I set the height of the supports so that the top of the strip was about 1 half inch high, but you should adjust that height to suit your scale. With the frame complete, Attach the electronics to the top of the frame as shown using double-sided foam tape. You'll have to temporarily unplug the IR sensors to allow the wires to feed through the slots for the nano pins. When everything is in position, carefully measure the center-to-center -center distance between the two detector LEDs. Those are the black LEDs. You'll need this dimension when you configure your program. Finally, connect the USB cable that came with your Arduino. And that's it. Your speedometer is complete and ready for programming. 
We'll deal with that in part two of this video series. In the description below this video, you'll find links to the products I've mentioned. I love to read your comments and to respond to your questions. If you want to see more videos of this type, be sure to subscribe and hit that like button. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.